Thank you for joining us today. Today we will be discussing the Idaho murders of four college students. Uh, a little bit about myself before we get into the case. I'm a retired law enforcement officer with 20 years of service. I began my career in the jail, worked the road, and became an investigator. During my career, my training was from everything from SWAT and to becoming a state certified crime scene technician. I've investigated crimes from thefts to homicides. After re retiring and becoming aware of the true crime and web sleuths, I started my channel for web sleuths to better understand the perspectives of law enforcement. And today, as I said, we're going to be covering the uh, Idaho murders of four college students, Madison, Kaylee, Ethan, and Zana. If you have any information regarding this case, please contact law enforcement as they are asking for additional information that will assist in the prosecution of Brian Kohlberger. By Prosecutor Bill Thompson, who advised that uh, Kohlberger has been charged not only with the four murders, but also felony burglary, which involves entering the residence with the intent to commit the crime of murder. It's this intent and targeting that we will be discussing in great detail today. Let's begin by looking at what supporting evidence that there was targeting that occurred at 1122 King Road. The residence, as you can see, is nothing that stands out. It's in the middle of a neighborhood. It's not on any primary road. It sits on a back street, and there's nothing that would bring anyone's awareness to look at this residence unless there was someone such as the offender who was targeting this specific household. When we look at Kohlberger, who did a research project that asked some specific questions regarding offenders and how they committed certain crimes, it becomes extremely interesting of the type of information he was asking for and for what intent he possibly had in mind. As he states in this research participation needed project, he says, my name is Brian and I am inviting you to participate in a research project that seeks to understand how emotions and psychological traits influence decision-making when committing a crime. Let's go over these questions he asked in the research. Why did you choose that victim or target over others? Before making your move, how did you approach the victim or target? Please detail what you were thinking and feeling. After committing the crime, what were you thinking and feeling? How was your life right before the crime occurred? Did you prepare for the crime prior to leaving your home? Please detail what you were thinking and feeling at this point. What was the first move you made in order to accomplish your goal? Please detail any thoughts or feelings at this point. Did you commit the crime alone? Yes? No? If not, how many people were involved? After arriving, what steps did you take prior to locating the victim or targets? In other words, person or object. Please detail your thoughts and feelings. How did you accomplish your goal? Please explain what you were thinking and feeling. Before leaving, is there anything else you did? And how did you leave the scene? Why did you choose that victim or target over others? Before making your move, how did you approach the victim or target? After arriving, what steps did you take prior to locating the victim or target? In other words, a person or object. While all the questions are extremely important and interesting, it is these three that specifically mention targeting. Let's look at the first question. Why did you choose that victim or target over others? Is he specifically which one of the four victims or which two of those was he specifically targeting? Currently, we don't know. The probable cause affidavit hasn't been released. But upon its release, we will have some great details and other information that will guide us in which direction and for what purpose Kohlberger had in mind for the occupants of 1122 King Drive. The next question addresses another issue. Before making your move, how did you approach the victim or target? Did you make contact with them that night? Uh, was there any type of uh, social media uh, presence or uh, inquiries made by him? When did they become targets? And had they been under any type of surveillance by him prior to the murders? This final question we're going to be looking at tonight. After arriving, what steps did you take prior to locating the victim or targets? In other words, person or object. Was he anticipating others being there? Was he planning of what he would do to lie in wait in case he was interrupted? There is a lot of details and a lot of information and speculation that we can make about this one question. 
I'm looking at this research not from the standpoint that he was doing it for research for his PhD, but that he, in his courses and his design, he was creating a checklist that when he confronted his targets, he would be able to handle and be able to commit a perfect crime. If you have any information regarding this case, please contact law enforcement and provide that information as soon as possible. If you enjoyed this video, please hit subscribe, like, share, and we appreciate you being here tonight, and I look forward to seeing you next time.